Hi everyone, welcome to a clinical psychology debunked video. It's been like a year since the last video. So let's uh, get right into it. I get this question quite a bit and I still don't feel like I understand the, diff the differences. And I feel like the differences are very minuscule between child psychology and pediatric psychology. I feel like in the field, there's a lot of like, we want to be our own people and we're doing our own thing when really there's a lot of overlap in these things so like take the differences with a grain of salt okay so they both basically do the same thing a child psychologist and a pediatric psychologist they both work with kids and adolescents and even sometimes emerging adults up to like i would say like age 20 um because what the research has shown is that adolescence doesn't necessarily end at age 18. It continues until emerging adulthood. Um, I feel like there are very minor, minuscule differences between the field. And I really think it varies by person to person. So one person you might ask and they might be like, oh no, I am definitely a pediatric psychologist. And other people that are doing pediatric psychology might also call themselves a child psychologist. It's really like minuscule differences, but I feel like some people are very adamant about it, right? So let's talk about pediatric psychologists first. These are people who work with children and uh, teenagers in the hospital setting. And so I like to think about pediatric psychologists are people who work with children who have like chronic illnesses that or chronic diseases that also could use some psychological intervention. So these are things like diabetes, uh, chronic pain, like the work I was doing at St. Louis Children's Hospital, hematology, oncology, so kids with cancer and sickle cell disease, um, cystic fibrosis are ones that come to mind, uh, craniofacial clinic, I'm trying to think what else. Those are like the top ones in my head. Oh, I think like gastro, uh, like basically like healthy weight clinic like basically wanting kids to like healthy or if the kids are getting a transplant something like that those are the things that i think of top um they typically work in a medical setting so typically attached to a hospital it's even better if they're attached to a children's hospital um I would consider it like a subspecialty of child psychology. I think of child psychology as this big broad umbrella and pediatric psychology is like a portion of that. Um, these psychologists usually work in like brief consults or brief interventions. They're not, it's not a long-term therapy sort of situation where you get like, I don't know, it's 15 to 20 sessions to work on an issue. These are much, much briefer, like maybe three or four sessions to like, help them with medical adherence, help them with anxiety, help them with like maybe needle phobias, help them with things that are going to aid in the treatment of whatever medical condition they have. Also, um, I would say that this under APA, I think division 54 is pediatric uh, psychology. Now moving on to child psychology, it I think of as like I said, the big umbrella. So I would say any childhood issues so school anxiety depression adhd learning issues sort of like whatever mental health things you can think of for a child or an adolescent falls under a child psychologist they don't necessarily have to have the medical diagnosis that like pediatric psychologists typically work with these child psychologists can work anywhere so private practice work in a hospital setting, work in academic medical settings. Um, these aren't like limited places where like a pediatric or a child psychologist can work, but these are like typical places. Um, in schools, child psychologists work. And so I feel like child psychologists aren't as like restricted. And I also feel like child psychologists, um, actually no, that's not true. So never mind. forget that thought. Um, these are what I consider longer term treatments. So if you're targeting anxiety, you might do exposures which take a little bit longer. You might be doing parent training. Um, you might be doing parent child interaction therapy, which just takes longer time. So I'm thinking like 15 to 20 sessions for like a child psychologist, typical issues. Now that's not to say that as a child psychologist, you can't dabble in pediatric psychology. If you're like really interested in diabetes or really interested in medical adherence or something like that they're not like 
boxes. I would think of them as like very overlapping Venn diagrams. And um, child psychologists are typically division 53. And yeah, that's pretty much from what my understanding is of the differences between pediatric psychology and child psychology. Very minor details, but um, I think that as, if you're applying to graduate school and you're like thinking about like, what kind of program you want to look at you want to look at like if you want to be a pediatric psychologist and you want to work in a medical setting you want to look for people who are doing that kind of work um, at the schools you're looking to apply to and the same with internship like I wanted a place where I could do both like I love pediatric psychology for specific things like chronic pain like hematology but I don't like the rest of that stuff so I wanted a place where I could do those two specific things and also all the child psychology things that I enjoy. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next video and have a great rest of your day. Peace.